Well, the three partners, Jane, Marge, and Mr. Jackson, are ready to open their office with supplies of fourth at bridge, a service to bridge payers looking for a fourth hand. They've rented an office from Mr. Race on the top floor of the building where Mr. Race has his real estate office. This episode is in two scenes, the bridge office and then to Mr. Race's office. But first to the fourth at bridge service, where we find Jane at a big desk gazing anxiously at the telephone. The door opens and Marge enters. Oh, good afternoon, partner. Oh, hello, Marge. How about it? You seem quite happy sitting back at that big desk there, staring into space. I'm not staring into space. I'm staring at this telephone. Do you know not a single soul has called up all morning? <laughs> well, they say you watch the kettle, it'll never boil. Where's Mr. Jackson? Oh, he's in the other office there. You know what I think we ought to put in here, Marge? What? A shower. A shower? Yes. I notice at home the phone always rings when I'm taking my shower. And I thought it was pretty good. That's a very and... good idea, Jess. And I'll think that over. Well, I wish you would, because this is getting monotonous just sitting here waiting for customers to call out. Well, give him time. He's only started to advertise the place today. I'm not worried about customers coming once we get started. Well, I am. I thought I'd be busy all morning taking orders over the phone. You know what? Maybe that telephone man he put in the phone this morning gave us the wrong number. What? He might have made a mistake and left us the wrong number. Oh, no, Dan. That's the number I asked for, and I had to do a lot of talking to get that special number. South 404, fourth of six. Get the idea? What idea? What I... The four. 404, fourth of six. Oh, I guess so. Oh, well, wake up, Jane. Yes, I can answer the phone like that. 4040, at the bridge. Well, that's the idea. Oh, that's kind of that way. Oh, you think of everything, Mars. Oh, good. Well, you do. I always say that about you. I say, Mars thinks of everything. Okay, good. I guess I do. I wish I'd have thought of asking that husband of yours to get somebody up here to wash those windows. Look at that dust. I can write my name in it. Well, I think you ought to write all three of our names. After all, we're partners. <laughs> oh, Jesse. There won't be any names written because I'm going to have somebody up here right away to watch them. The first I want to see Mr. Jackson. I want to know all about those many I should be at this morning. Were there many? Oh, yeah. Oh, good old, good old, Oh, hello. I was just asking about you. How's it going? Quite well, I think. I might say very well. I was just taking an index file of my players. You see, on these cards, I have a catalog of 14 So how many players have you hired so far? So far, I've engaged six players. Yes, sir. That's not very much. You expect to do much better than that. Is that all that I can all right? No, the heavens is low. The place is literally swarming with these fellows. It doesn't look as low. Right? <laughs> well, the chief officers, Jane, Mars, and Mr. Jackson, have opened their fourth at bridge office and are ready to rent out bridge players to persons meeting a fourth hand. Mr. Jackson has hired only six men so far, but Marge continues running her water ad, seeking more personable young men who play bridge. This episode takes place about four the same afternoon in two scenes, a room in a cheap midtown hotel, and then to the fourth of bridge office, the first to the hotel room. Two young men lounge listlessly in chairs. <laughs> hey, Mike, look at this. What is it? It's here read in the morning paper. This sounds like something that ain't work. What do you make of it? One good bridge players, neat, personable young men who play fairly good bridge, earn extra money in your spare time easy. Client person, 1233, personally. Let me see that. Yeah, here, right here. Play fairly good bridge, extra money in spare time. Oh, that's right up your alley, Mike. Those sound interesting, doesn't it? Interesting? Sounds like a sore cut, if you ask me. I wonder what sort of a rocket this could be. Hey, that's me. That's you, all right, Mike. Well, one thing's certain. It can never be you, old guy. Oh, what about it, sir? I don't work this in with you. This is all along, so something better turns up. You sure could stand a few bucks while we're waiting. This place, earn extra money in your spare time. I wonder what the game is. What the fuck is that, mate? You can take over anybody at this, you know that. If you do things with cards, and even I can't see you do it. And I work with you from coast to coast and even on the other side. Mm-hmm. Yes. But it's been so long, huh? I'm a little out of practice. Out of practice, you? Ah, I bet you even money you can cut a nation on the bottom of the deck any time you want it. It must be a means to an end of death. Yeah, and it don't hurt to try, Mike. Looks like easy go to me. 1233 paper. Yeah, that should be right downtown here somewhere. How about us down over there? No, not us. I'll do this one myself, sir. Want to look it over and see what's going on? Okay, by me. 
His blue hair, and he has the saddest eyes. The kind of dances we are close. No, not Mrs. Jackson. You saw him just in here. Oh, I don't think I'll wait for Mrs. Jackson. I'll interview him myself. But I heard the way Mrs. Jackson did it all this morning. I know what to ask him. Uh, sit down, Mark. Uh, you can come in here now. Thank you, Miss. Did you say I'll have to wait for the Mr. Jackson? Well, yes, but while we're waiting, I guess I can interview you. I've got to find out all about you. Well, there's not much to tell. Oh, but we have to know all about everybody we hire. Uh, sit down, please. Thank you. What's your name? Michael DeVore. Michael. Uh, I guess I better write down everything. I have some paper here. I was rather intrigued by your question, Miss. It's Mrs. I'm Mrs. H. Oh, uh, how do you do? Oh, uh, that's enough. That's all right. <laughs> Thank you. Now, um... I don't think I quite understand the idea of your business with today. Well, first I want to find out where you live. I'm afraid I have no problem with work. You see, I've traveled to me. Well, where do you live? Well, right now, nowhere. I'm a sort of soldier of fortune, you might say. That's what you mean. Well, right now, I mean I'm, uh, unemployed. Oh, well, now let me see. I yeah. was quite interested in your good journey, man. Yes, uh, well, uh, well... You have good games here. Oh, no, not here. We send our players when somebody calls. Uh, now, the next question... I don't understand. What do you mean, you send out this play? Well, if somebody needs a four for bridge, we send him a player and he charge five dollars for an evening. Or if it's a small game, he charge two dollars. Oh, you're going to like it here. What do you mean, I'm going to like it here? You mean I'm hired? Well, um, are you married, Mr. DeVoe? Do I understand you to say that you rent out this play as a sort of a... a Gigolo service for big game? Yes, we ran our players to see the new fourth. We call it the fourth of good service. Oh, I see. So that's the right... Uh, <laughs> quite model. Oh, well, yes, I thought of it myself. Uh, we have three partners. Mr. Jackson, who's a good teacher. He has uh, the good players. And Marge Hale, who's my best friend. He's one of the partners, too. And last uh, but not least, your friend. Thanks, Mr. DeVere. Mind if I smoke? Well, Mr. Jackson always asks everybody that. Oh, excuse me, the phone. Well, uh, I mean, uh, shall I call for a for the big service? Is that a player? Oh, you brought it back, Mr. DeVere. It's like a customer. Hello? Uh, yes, sir? Uh, what time? Uh, 8 o'clock. I want a good player. How much is it cost? Uh, $5 for the evening. Okay, well, I'll take one. Address Fifty-four, twenty-three, North. Very well. We'll have him there. Well, that is that was my husband again. Your husband? Now, that's the last day. If she thinks that I don't even know our own house number, well, this time the last going to be on the other foot. Mrs. DeVille, you've got your first job. Tonight you come to our house and you're going to pay your five dollars. Yeah. My friend DeVille has been hired and already assigned to his first job. The first call the Fort of Big Service has had since it opened. Michael DeVere becomes quite prominent in the lives of our friends, the Aces, as we learn when next we meet the Easy Aces.